to camcorder. Uh, to evoke, evoke an old Spike Milligan song, Labour is walking backwards for Christmas. And not only back for Christmas, Mr Speaker, right on back to the 70s. We're hearing alarming echoes of Soviet status policies in the form of a state-run insurance company and a state-controlled electricity market. Free trade, and we've got one of the proponents over there, I've got to pay credit to the member, Mr Phil Goff, who negotiated the free trade agreement with China. Free trade has long been a bipartisan agreement. But now the current leader is questioning Labour's support for the TPP, while their ex-leader is saying Labour should continue to back it. But what the leader, the dithering David Cunliffe, is saying to one audience, he may not be saying to another audience. Will we back it? Well, maybe, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Labour is painting a picture of itself, Mr Speaker, of a party bemused, befuddled, bewildered and becalmed, and certainly one that is unfit to govern. With Labour at the helm, New Zealand's ship of state would veer dangerously onto the rocks of higher borrowing, higher spending and higher taxes. The very policies which pushed New Zealand into the uh, global financial crisis six to 12 months before the rest of the world. Mr Speaker, a Labour government supported by the Greens would be an absolute disaster for New Zealand. A stark contrast with a steady, considered, prudent financial management which has characterised the national-led government stewardship of the country's finances over the last five years. This principled and pragmatic government speaker continues to work relentlessly for the benefit of every New Zealander, adjusting the mesh in many areas and at a multitude of levels. It has succeeded in cushioning vulnerable New Zealanders from the ongoing effects of the worst economic con conditions in decades, and one only has to look at the situation abroad to realise how fortunate we are in this country. Over the years, the government's prudent financial management of the nation's finances has received ringing endorsements from stars in the world economic firmament. It has been noted that reducing our exposure to overseas debt markets as much as possible, whilst, as I mentioned before, still cushioning vulnerable New Zealanders from the harshest edges of the ongoing global financial crisis. We are doing that. Our considered fiscal stewardship means that New Zealand's economy is performing better than the US, the UK, Germany, the bulk of the Eurozone and, of course, Japan. The effects of the drought earlier in the year have largely been shrugged off, and we're witnessing a continued upturn in the non-agricultural sectors as well, meaning that New Zealand economy is set to go for a substantial acceleration of growth in the second half of this year and beyond. And growth is occurring, as we've heard, across a range of sectors, in addition to construction and housing. Consumer spending is growing at an increasing space, with spending on services particularly strong over the June quarter. Manufacturing and services activity surveys have put in consistently strong readings over this year. And China's insatiable demand for our primary products means our export earnings are looking very healthy. It is gratifying the expansion is becoming more consistent across the region. My colleague here mentioned Taranaki, many of us call it Taradise, where the twin pillars, the black and white pillars of oil and milk, are propping up the, um, and causing the economy to grow hugely. In fact, it's leading New Zealand uh, as we speak. This is a government that is getting results for all New Zealanders. Our focus has been on growth that is sustainable and built on higher savings and earnings rather than ever more increasing debt and greater consumption. As I've noted previously, our prudent policies have been praised by Peter Orsak, previously President Obama's Director of the Office of Management and Budget. He praised New Zealand as standing out in the world as the only country which has coupled additional economic stimulus with medium-term fiscal consolidation. Not surprisingly, Mr Speaker, huge numbers of New Zealand reports suffering nightmares at the thought of our measured approach being replaced by an economy measured by a coalition of money-printing Greens and a Labour Party bereft of strong leadership, dithering and dodging and answerable only to its union masters. Other support of the government's economic management has come from the IMF Managing Director, Christine Lagarde, who praised the government's economic policy and business growth agenda and described the New Zealand economy as being very stable, very promising and a lot better than other parts of the world. The IMF endorsed New Zealand's balanced and pragmatic economic management and confirmed the government's economic plan strikes the right balance between supporting growth and eliminating public debt. Imagine, Mr Speaker, what the report may have been if New Zealand's economy had been managed by a dithering and dysfunctional pickup team of a not quite sure 
where we're going, anti-free market labour policy and the red green market money printers. The New Zealand economy is root good health and it needs a national government to say that way. Mr Speaker. Catherine Delahunty.